It's the book of Esther and part five in our uh, highlights of the story. And uh, today's episode is called Commendation. Perhaps you remember from a couple of days ago how uh, Mordecai, who's the uncle of Queen Esther, um, happened to find himself in the right place at the right time to overhear the conspiracy of two of the palace guards, uh, as a result of which they got uh, executed in a rather grisly way. Uh, Here's another sequel to that story. That night the king could not sleep, so he ordered the book of the Chronicles, the record of his reign, to be brought in and read to him. It was found recorded there that Mordecai had exposed Bigthana and Teresh, two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway, who conspired to, to, conspired to assassinate King Xerxes. What honour and recognition has Mordecai received for this? the king asked. Nothing has been done for him, his attendants answered. The king said, who's in the court? Now Haman had just entered the outer court of the palace to speak to the king about impaling Mordecai on the pole he'd set up for him. His attendants answered, Haman is standing in the court. Bring him in, the king ordered. When Haman entered, the king asked him, what should be done for the man the king delights to honor? Now Haman thought to himself, Who is there that the king would rather honour than me? So he answered the king, For the man the king delights to honour, let them bring a royal robe the king has worn, and a horse the king has ridden, one with a royal crest placed on its head. Then let the robe and horse be entrusted to one of the king's most noble princes. Let them robe the man the king delights to honour and lead him on the horse through the city streets, proclaiming before him, this is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. Go at once, the king commanded Haman, get the robe and the horse and do just as you suggested. For Mordecai the Jew, who sits at the king's gate, do not neglect anything you have recommended. So Haman got the robe and the horse He robed Mordecai and led him on horseback through the city streets, proclaiming before him, This is what is done for the man the king delights to honour. Don't you love that? Don't you love this? Haman totally getting his just desserts. He sets himself up as the enemy of Mordecai. Because Mordecai, earlier in the story, uh, refused to bow down and pay homage to Haman. Um, Haman says, I'm going to get you for this. Uh, And uh, the king ends up um, commanding Haman to do Mordecai this greatest honour, which he thought he deserved himself. Commendation. It's a very unusual part of the story, but uh, it's interesting, isn't it? Once again, the question is asked, is God there? And we read a story like this, an episode like this, and we say, you know, um, uh, evil people getting their just desserts, good people getting their just desserts. Is God, yeah, God is there. God is there when things turn out well. That, in a sense, doesn't surprise us. What surprises us is that the Bible also says God God is there when things uh, go badly. And in this bit of the story, things go well. But there's a qualification to that. Because Haman's hatred for Mordecai's people is uh, ramped up even further by this episode. Haman wants not just Mordecai, not just his family, but the whole Jewish nation wiped out. And therefore the question of whether God is there or not, it's no optional extra, it's a matter of survival. If God is not there, his people will not be protected from their enemies and they will be wiped out. Is God there or not? God has to be there, because without God being there, no one is safe. God's people will die. And that truth is uh, uh, also brought for us in the uh, the New Testament. Is God there? Is God going to be able to save the people that he loves? Uh, is God there? Well, we look at the uh, death of Jesus, and we say to ourselves, God is there. If God had not been there at the death of Jesus then we would not be saved. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are there uh, in everything that goes on in our lives. You're there in the good times when everything seems to go as it should, 
and in the bad times. And sometimes、uh, the bad times are where、uh, your most precious work is done. The worst day in the world's history, the day on which Jesus died, and yet that was where、uh, you brought salvation to your people. And so we thank you that even though we can't see、uh, anything at all in the depths of your plans,、uh, we know that we can trust you, because you are there, and your plans are always good. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. There's one more of these. Hope you can join me tomorrow for thought for the day. God bless you.